Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Amayu and in today's video we'll be discussing very recent famous methodology copulus. You must have seen it in different research papers. Practitioners and researchers from diverse fields are actually using copulus. So in this video, this is actually the first part of the copulus. We'll be talking about, you know, what copulus is. I'll try my best to give you a very simple explanation of copulus and along with that I'll go through through you know some simple functions in our studio as well that how you're going to run the copulus so before further ado let's move on okay so before explaining copulus we need to understand two things that are actually regarding the normal distribution or any distribution so the first is the marginal distribution and the second one is the joint distribution you all know what normal distribution is what distribution for example in this case if you see on the x-axis we have got SAT score and on the sorry on the y-axis we have got the frequencies so this is actually a perfect normal distribution in which you know the the data are actually scattered equally you know on the both horizons of the average so if you see the mean the mean is actually 1150 so a very high frequency for 1150 and then you've got you know lesser numbers and lesser frequencies for fewer SAT score and again fewer frequencies for very high SAT score so this is a perfect normal distribution what is actually marginal distribution and a joint distribution that's interesting and that is very important to understand the copulus so let's rely on a very simple example for example if I give you an example of two variables, the first one is the daily temperature and the second one is the daily ice cream sales. So let's uh, uh, consider the daily temperature as X and let's consider the daily ice cream sales is Y. So what is actually the marginal distribution? The marginal distribution is actually, you know, the simple distribution of a single variable. Like in case of the daily temperature, for example, if we consider the daily temperature average as 20 degrees centigrade and the standard deviation is a 5 degrees centigrade, these are actually the two parameters of the normal distribution. So the marginal distribution would be x tends to n with the 20 average and sigma square, uh, that is actually the, uh, the variance, that's why we have taken the square on 5. So that's these two parameters so this is actually the marginal distribution which which talks about the distribution of a single variable similarly if we talk about the daily ice cream sales for example the daily ice cream sale the average is actually 50 ice creams and the standard deviation is 10 ice creams again you know the marginal distribution would be 50 with the, uh, the variance of 10 power raised to power 2 so this is actually the sigma so these two are the parameters so these are actually marginal distribution now what is joint distribution that's interesting we talked about the marginal distribution which were you know related to specific individual variables but the joint distribution is a bit different from the marginal distribution so the joint distribution of two or more variables describes the probability distribution of these variables simultaneously that's important so here a new factor emerges which is simultaneity so we will be looking at the distribution of the two variables simultaneously other than you know we saw previously in the marginal distribution separately so it shows how the variables interact or are correlated with each other okay so this is actually the marginal distribution now let's bring back you know our previous example that we use for the marginal, distrib uh, marginal distribution so joint distribution of x and y you know x is actually the daily temperature and y is the, the daily sales of ice cream so suppose the joint distribution of x which is temperature y ice cream sale is a bivariate normal with means that is the mu of x20 we already discussed it and for the ice cream with the average mu y is equal to 50 and their standard deviation we all know that the standard deviation of x is 5 and the standard deviation of y is 10 and if we have the coefficient the correlation coefficient so we say that this is a bivariate normal and in the bivariate normal we are supposing it a positive association when temperature rises the number of sales of the ice creams increases so we know the rho value this is rho is actually the uh, correlation coefficient which is 0 0.8 again a very strong correlation between these two now if we take the variance covariance matrix of it so on the diagonal you see that we have taken you know the the variances of the two variables the 5 square is actually the variance of the daily temperature and the 10 square is actually the variance of the ice cream sales and this is 
actually these are actually the covariances what are the covariances just multiply the correlation coefficients with the variances so these on this diagonal we have got you know the covariances and on this we have got the variance so this is actually the variance covariance covariance matrix of the two variable distributions so from this we understand that this joint distribution tells us that only not only that not only are temperatures in sales normally distributed but they are also tend to increase together since the row is 0 0.8 indicates a strong positive correlation okay so what is the gaussian coppola here so the gaussian coppola in this case models the correlation between temperature and ice cream sales independent of their individual distributions which are marginal distributions so this was actually a simple explanation of the coppola that what coppolas are and what coppola is so we studied that let's now move on to so now let's take an example of the financial markets so for example if we have got three markets the stock market the bond market and the commodity market and we take the returns of three of them for example for the stock returns we represent this with rs and for the bond returns we represent this with rb and for the commodity returns we represent this with rc and if you have the normal distribution of three of them we see that the average of the stock returns is somewhere here which might be equal to 0.01 and the standard deviation is actually very high which is around 0.05 and for the bond returns the average uh, is actually 0. Point, again it is almost 0. 0.02 or 0. 0.01 and the standard deviation is 0. 0.02 so for the commodity returns the average is around 0. Uh, 0.5 and the standard deviation is 0. 0.1 for now these are the marginal distribution of the three markets the marginal distribution of the stock returns for the bond returns and for the commodity returns now what are the joint distribution first of all if you look at the joint distribution of stocks with the bonds we see that there is a sort of positive correlation the data is very scattered we can't properly say that how strong it is but if you look at the stock and commodity returns the data is not that scattered so here the positive correlation is quite visible and for the joint distribution of bond and commodity returns again the data is scattered but we can say that there is a, some sort of positive correlation okay so we discussed you know the coppola in a detail and how the joint distribution is important to know in order to understand the coppolas now let's try it in you know in the r studio that how we gonna run it in the r studio so for that we'll be needing three packages coppola mass and ggplot2 ggplot2 is not that important but if you're going to plot anything regarding the joint distribution or the coppolas you will probably or not probably but you'll definitely be needing the ggplot2 so install the coppola install the mass install the ggplot2 i've already installed it so i'll just library them so click wherever you want inside the function and click on run and then click to run the mass and then the ggplot2 okay so the first thing that we need is to generate the data okay so set dot seed is actually for generating the normal normally distributed data so we are actually creating this data set we haven't cal extracted this data from the real world you know returns bonds and commodities but but we are we are actually taking it we are actually creating this data in the r studio so set dot seed is e set dot seed one two three run it what is this n n is actually the number of observations we need thousand observations for each of the three variables the stocks the bonds and the commodities okay run this n what is the mu m mu, mu is actually the averages so for the average for the stock is 0 0.01 the average for the bond is 0 0.005 and for the average for the commodity is 0 0.02 these are the averages of those returns that we are considering here so this is the mu and sigma is actually you know the standard deviation for the standard deviation of the stock we have got 0 0.05 for the bond we have got 0 0.02 as we saw in our previous graph so for the and for the um, uh, commodity is 0 0.10 let's run this 
Now, what is this row? Row is actually the correlation matrix. We know that the variables are actually highly correlated with each other. So this one is actually the correlation of the stock returns with the stock returns. 0 0.3 is the correlation of the stock returns with the bonds. And 0 0.5 is actually the correlation of the stocks with the commodity returns, market returns. And 0 0.2 is actually the returns of the stock with the bonds okay so let's run this row which is actually the correlation matrix next is data generation so now we will be generating this data okay so what what function we will be requiring we will be requiring this mv norm what does it require the first argument is n which is thousand we need thousand observation for each what are the averages the mu so we have already defined in our previous example that what is the mu so mu is equal to mu sigma is equal to the diagonal of sigma so for the sigma what we'll be taking is the diagonal of sigma and then rho and then the diagonal of sigma again which is the variance covariance matrix so for the sigma we will be considering the variance covariance matrix that i discussed in the slides and in the next function we have got the call names so when we you know generate this data set of 1000 observations for each we need to name them for the stock we will we'll name it as stock for the bond we name it as bond and for the commodity we name it as commodity so let's run each of them so when i run the data so let's let me show you the data in the console so this is actually the let me run the head of the data so this is the head of the data we have got three so now let's name name it call names data now run it so head of data c so we have got three markets stock mar market returns bond market returns and commodity market returns okay so the next is the next function is very important we need to generate this u what does it mean u is actually we are actually generating the probabilities of you know uh, probability density functions for each of these variables so we will be generating this u u is equal to probs and data probs is a function and in that function we will enter this data i'll show you what this u means okay so this is the u for example let's run the head of u what does it mean let me show you okay so zero the very first observation for the stock is 0 0.276 what does it mean it means that the first value is actually falling in the 27.67238 percentile and the first value of the bond is actually falling in the 0 0.63 percentile and for the commodity is 0 0.07 uh, 5 which is 75.924076 percentile okay so we have you know actually uniformed the data into the proper distributions with this props pops function this is the pops data now we're gonna add this copula model for the copula model we will be using fit copula function and inside this fit copula function we will be needing the normal copula which is the gaussian copula dim is equal to three we have got three variables so we will give three and method is maximum likelihood u is actually our data newly generated the probabilities from here dim is three and normal copula is the gaussian copula so let's run this one as well okay now another function is the copula samples what does copula samples mean we are actually bringing this data into the proper format so the copula sample again or copula n let's run this one as well okay so now convert copula samples back to original scales remember we converted this into the u which were actually the prob the density which were actually the probability density function but now let's gonna convert this into proper samples so for the sample we we need this data dot frame for the stocks we will be needing this q norm copula samples one which is the first column where mu is one and the standard deviation sigma is also one for the second we we need we need the mu two and the standard deviation sigma also two and for the third three so let's run this one as well okay so now plotting the copula distribution 
For the plotting, I have simply used the ggplot. So if you see, the first one is the you know actually the distribution, the joint distribution and its correlation sort of association between the stock and bonds. So let's run this P1. Okay. Now let me run this P1 and let's see what do we have. See, it is the same plot that I've shown you on you know in the in the previous slides. P2 is actually for the stocks and commodities. Let's run this P2. Let's check this P2 as well. So this is the P2. Okay, now P3, which is for the bond and the commodities. Let's run this P3. Okay, P3. That's P3. Okay, see this is P3, which is between the bond and the commodity returns. So that was all about the very first video regarding the copulas. I'll come up with um, the next part of this video in which I'll be using the, the real time data which I'll pick from different financial markets. And I hope it was a bit helpful if you people still have confusion. There are a lot of sources available on the internet. I'll come up with further explanation as well in the second part. So thank you very much for watching my video. God bless you all.